I'm Fletcher Roden, and this is Tracking the Lone Wolf, based on my new book, Tracking the Lone Wolf, The Sigma at Work, at Home, and at Play. Today on Tracking the Lone Wolf, the Gamma and the Omega. Tracking the Lone Wolf is a new twice-monthly show with lots of invaluable information for just about everybody, so I suggest that you like this video and subscribe to the channel. The book is available in paperback and for Kindle and in audiobook format from Audible and other platforms. I'm a public speaker, so I welcome you to go to the website trackingthelonewolf.com for more information on that. Well, as we've seen in previous episodes of Tracking the Lone Wolf, the designations of Alpha and Beta really fail to capture the complexity of the human condition, the human psyche, the human community. This brings us to uh, other personality types. In fact, rather than the mere designations of Alpha and Omega, or Alpha and uh, Beta, we are now looking at Alpha, Beta, Omega, Gamma, Delta, and Sigma. So the first two of these we're going to look at together, Omega and Gamma, they're very comparable. These, are, uh, these share certain personality types with both the Alpha and the Beta. They are both intelligent. They are both gregarious, like the uh, Alpha. They can be prone to isolation, like the Beta. They share the Beta's resistance to leadership. And disinterest in personal glorification. Like the beta, they lack a reliance on physicality the way the alpha does. The, both the omega and the gamma lack the drive, which both the alpha and the beta have. The gamma and the omega, sort of two sides of the same coin, can be seen as the slacker types. Consider them the failure to launch. They have a propensity uh, to be, to resist leadership. They, they do not seek to lead. They also do not seek to be led. Uh, they share traits with the sigma in that regard. An independence, an intelligence. But they lack the drive or the focus of either the sigma or the beta or the alpha. The gamma is the joker. Not the clown prince of crime, but a person who cracks wise, a Weisenheimer. My father used to use the term smartass. Uh, the omega is the prankster. And these two, again, two sides of the same coin, uh, have a lot of energy, but they don't channel it well. And they have a lot of potential, which is also not channeled. They are not leaders. But they are common, and they do have purpose. If, by the way... For example, let's, let's, let's take a look. Let's move on to the three theaters. I'll show you what I mean. I'll remind you that we have three theaters in life, at least as far as my book is concerned and as far as the show is concerned, the professional theater, the familial theater, and the social theater. This is basically at work, at home, and at play. So the omega and the gamma at work well, they can be they can be valuable because they are um, good for morale. 
A good joke lightens the tension. That keeps the climate of the company pleasant and manageable. It won't affect the culture of the company, but it will affect the climate. However, it can be disruptive of the climate also because a little bit of omega goes a long way. Um, there's, it, it can be distracting. It can, be, uh, it can set the wrong uh, impression. It can make the wrong appearance. It can, be, it can be a waste of time. If you've got one of these two personality types on your work crew, you might think about giving the gamma the Joker character, the, 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 the Weisenheimer. If he likes to crack wise, let him do a newsletter, strictly internal, at the end of every week. Make sure it's always kind and never cruel. But let it poke fun at the people in the office at the events of the week. It'll give everybody something to look forward to. And they can all bond over it and have a laugh over it. Always make it kind, and always keep it in-house. If you've got a gamma on your crew, or rather a uh, omega, who's got pent-up energy, not sure what to do with it, think about putting that person in charge of uh, workplace exercises. That's always a good bonding experience. Take one day a month, let's say one hour out of one day, the last Friday of every month and turn it over to this personality, man or woman, and let them organize a workplace exercise. There are plenty of books on the subject. This will give them a way to expend their creative energy in a way which is also beneficial and productive and not distracting. At home, you're more likely to find omegas and gammas among your children, less likely among the uh, matriarch or patriarch of the family. The reason for this is because omegas and gammas have a less of a compulsion to lead, and they are less sociable. They're, well, they're sociable, but they're not as reliant on uh, structure. In fact, they're more prone to avoid structural things, such as family units, you're more likely to find an omega or a gamma as an aunt or an uncle than as a, a mother or a father. They, um, they're prone to um, serial romances and less uh, likely to commit. Uh, so in the social world, omegas and gammas are uh, great. They're very fun. They are perfectly suited to the social theater. But when dating one, know if you're dating an, an omega or a gamma that they are going to be prone to serial uh, dating but not to marriage. Or they may have several marriages but not children because they are not prone to leadership and because there are aspects of their nature, they have a natural tendency toward immaturity which does not lend itself well to uh, a, 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 an alpha type position or even a beta type position when it comes to the familial theater. So when you are in a social theater, they are very great fun, but if you're gonna try to take an omega or a gamma from the social theater into the familial theater, you might have a problem. Now as regards the lone wolf, let's apply it to the lone wolf as we do on this show and in my book. The lone wolf and the beta and the gamma get along fine. They, have, they, they, they share a lot of qualities, intelligence, independence, uh, a, a certain resistance toward codependency. These are characters who are more comfortable alone than others might be. Uh, they are non-competitive. The omega and the gamma and the sigma are all non-competitive so they are not likely to clash. If you're a sigma, or if you're an omega or a gamma who is interrelating with a sigma, 
know that naturally you should get along quite well. There should be no natural clash there. If you're working together or living together or playing together, then you should be looking at a harmonious relationship. Okay, that brings us to the end of our study of the Omega and the Gamma. Here on Tracking the Lone Wolf, you can read more about it in my book, Tracking the Lone Wolf, The Sigma at Work, at Home, and at Play. It's available in paperback for Kindle and in audiobook format on Audible and other platforms. I'm Fletcher Roden. This has been Tracking the Lone Wolf. Tune in again. Thank you.